Hi everyone, continuing with Read Tech. Now we're gonna talk about reinforcement learning, DQN. So the DQN is a good reinforcement learning with the implementation of neural networks and it's called Deep Q because we are using more than one hidden layer. You can use one hidden layer that depends on your design. So let's start as you know, mostly everyone uh, should know a little about reinforcement learning already before dipping into this video. So we have the normal setup of uh, reinforcement learning. We have the environment, we have the reward, and we have the actions. And we have the agent. In this case, the agent is a DQN. This DQN network, uh, especially, it, re it needs a replay buffer and this replay buffer is saving all the previous experience from the environment. This to avoid any correlation between the samples. And later on, when the buffer is full with data, then we do a sample, a random sample called mini bash. And this mini batch is the one we use for the learning in the Q learning. So the replay buffer is important as I was mentioning. It stores the past experience to break the correlation between the consecutive experience and the established stabilized training. So one of the benefits is to improve the learning and stability by sampling random batches. It reduces the variance of updates and help the network learn more stable policies. So for a simple replay buffer, we could have an initialization uh, here we're using Python to explain. So we initialize the buffer with the size. Then we have a small function also to add the experience that have contained the state action rewardness state and the flag done. This flag, as you know, is just to know when the episode have finished. Then we add a new experience to this buffer. And when the buffer is full, we start removing as normal the oldest experience. Then we have the sample function that is gonna take care of the random samples and batch of those experience. So after this, we have uh, moving to the uh, more complex or more there were more designs to improve the outcome of the DQ learning with the target network. Now we have two networks, which the main and the target. The target net, uh, network is characterized as a copy of the main, which is updated uh, with a frequency. This frequency could be low or high, depends on your experiments or investigations or design or solution. These two main target, main and target network uh, get the Q value and this uh, Q value is go to the loss function with the mean MSE, mean square error, and then the main target, the main network is updated and the main network will be the copy again of the target depending on the frequency you have set up in your solution. So, what is DQ with target network is uh, introduced by DeepMind to establish training, to stabilize training. The target network has the same architectures as the main Q network, but its weight are updated less frequently. Less frequently. This helps to reduce the likelihood of the oscillations and divergence during training. So the new formula is this one. We have the Q with the Q value of the state and action. We can see here the main difference is in the Q target. So we are get, predicting from the target the value, right? We want to know what is the value from the target. So this is the main difference. So how is the train process? The training process is the loss computation. So as I mentioned, the loss is computating, computated as a mean square error between the predicted Q value from the main network and the target value. 
Then we have a backpropagation. So the main network weights are updated using backpropagation to minimize the loss. And then later, depending on the frequency you set up, the target network update process. The target network weights are updated periodically to match the main network weight. This is done less frequently, for example, 10,000 steps to provide stable target values for Q-Laning update. The update rule for the target network is simple. It's just the Q-Main go to the target, so it's as a copy. So what else? The implementation. So we can see here some attributes that is important in the design of the agent. We have the state dimension, dimension and the action, action, action dimension. We have the gamma, the discount factor for future rewards with epsilon to explore it rate. For epsilon greedy policy, we have the buffer, as I mentioned, replay buffer. To store the experience, we have the Q network and the target network. The Q network will be the main network. So also we need some methods that is the build model. Remember that is taking the data from the experience. Then we had the choose actions. We had the learn function and we had the add date target network function. So if we just dig little in the initialization, we have the state dimension, the action, to create the network, to build the network, we have the gamma, epsilon, and buffer. So the Q network will be built with the hidden dimension. We could choose 16 in this case. We have the learning rate. It could be 0, 0, point, 0 0.001, 0 0.01, 0 0.02. Depends of your solution. You have to try different values. Then you have the target value. That is a build model also the same. We has to have both of them the same from target and network and later will be updated. So we move to the build model to create the layers. This is the simplest one with the input, one hidden layer and an output layer. So for this, we have used the activation relu function because it introduces no linearity to the model, allowing to learn complex pattern that is depends of how difficult is your problem to solve? If you have anything complex, then you need to find out with activation function you could use. There are benefits that mention this is avoid vanishing gradient problems like sigmund or tangent H. Relu does not saturate for positive inputs, which helps in faster and more effective training. Then we have the ADEN optimizer. So it's for the optimization of the networks. Its benefit is that it's adaptive. It adjusts the learning rate for each parameter, leading to faster convergence and better performance. Then we have the mean square error. This is a measurement of the difference between predicted and target value. It provides a smooth gradient for optimization, which helps in st stable training. So what are the benefits of optimizing Aiden? The Aiden optimizer, as I mentioned, is adjust the learning rate for each parameter individually. So it's beneficially beneficial in reinforcement learning, where the importance of different features can vary over time. This is especially useful in environments with four state and eight actions where certain actions might become more relevant as the agent learns. A computationally efficient low memory requirements is crucial when dealing with high dimension actions like eight, ensuring faster convergence. In handling noise gradient, Often, you know, reinforcement learning involves noisy gradient updates due to the stochastic nature of the environment. Adams mechanisms combining the advantages of both RMS prop and SGD with momentum help stabilize the learning process in such noisy environments. So the mechanism is a, a moment estimation. It calculates the adaptive learning rate for 
each of the parameters by keeping an exponential decaying average of pass gradients in the first moment and the pass square gradient in the second moment. The bias correction is included bias correction terms to counteract the initial moments providing accurate estimate during the initial stage. So benefit for DQN, suitability for regression. So that's one benefit. The task of updating key values in a DQN is essentially a regression problem where the globe is to minimize the difference between predicted Q values and target Q values. MSE is well suited for such regression task. Then we have the stable gradient. It provides a smooth and stable gradient, which is crucial for the stability of the learning process in reinforcement learning. Stable gradients help in consistent updates to the network parameter. Then we have the error sensitivity. MSE is sensitive to large errors it means it strongly penalizes significant discrepancy between predicted and target Q values. This sensitivity encourages the network to correct large errors effectively, leading to more accurate Q values predictions. Then the mechanism is to calculate the average the square difference between predicted Q value and target Q values. This encourages the model to make predictions that are, are close as possible to the target value. The gradient descendants using MSCs, the gradient descendant optimization process adjusts the model parameters to minimize the square error, ensuring that the predicted Q value converges towards the target Q values over time. So there is something important also is the exploration and exploitation. So for this, we use the Exilon Greedy policy mostly. Is, so it chooses an action method, right? Allows the agent to balance exploration and exploitation using the following logic. So for, for exploration with a probability for Exilon, the agent chooses a random action. This allows the agent to explore the action space and potentially discover better actions. Exploitation with a probability of one minus epsilon, the agent chooses the actions with the highest pre predicted Q values for the given state. This allows the agent to exploit its current knowledge to maximize rewards. So there are advantages First, it stabilizes learning so the target network smooths out the learning at date, making the training process more stable. It reduces overestimation bias, especially in double DQN. This approach mitigates the overestimation of Q value, leading to better policy performance. Improve cover convergence, convergence, the uses of a target network often results in faster and more reliable convergence to optimal policies compared to the using a simple single Q network. This also leads to the actor critique design that we could talk later on in the next videos. So thank you for listening to this video. Join the channel, subscribe, give your comments uh, what type of algorithm or what do you want to hear in the next video thank you bye bye see you